Hello everyone, welcome to Hook, Line and Sinker. Today, Andrew, the tensions have spilt over and we're doing something we've never done before. Yeah, it's a great spoiling point. I think the show's just going a little too well. Yep. Um, Success has bred contempt. Yeah, and when we go away we like the Rolling Stones and I'm sick of it. We're splitting up. Okay, today it's solo fishing on Hook, Line and Sinker. He's going to the lakes, I'm going to see the sea. Oh, whack, he's got plenty on that. Southern Well, the backdrop probably gives it away for most of you. That is the pink granite outcrops of the hazards. And this bit of water behind me is in fact Coles Bay, a very, very popular spot here on the east coast of Tasmania and a spot where I did a lot of fishing in my early, younger years before I had so much grey hair. Heaps of flathead, good fishing here. It's, it's actually a little bit overcast today. That won't hurt us and it's nice and calm, so we should have a great day. We'll go and see if we can't catch one of the flathead that Coles Bay is famous for, plus a few other things that kick around in this part of the world. So come for the ride, folks. This should be most enjoyable. Alright, well no, that's not the spectacular hazards at Fraser and I know it's the damn wall at Lake Augusta near the coldest place in Tassie and today folks it's cold. It's also the gateway to the western lakes and in this case today the 19 lagoons which is where we'll be fishing, fly fishing for some of the toughest trout on the planet. Folks this is where I learnt to fish so come with me and hopefully we can trick one of these tough little trouties. Cold, very cold. Alright, well folks, now I'm going to swear here, so if you don't like bad language, turn your TV down now. But the bloody weather forecast, alright, it said 23 degrees, sunny, calm. I guess that just shows sort of how uh, unpredictable this place is. I mean, we are, as I said before, in the coldest part of Tasmania. I've picked Lake Kay. That's the beauty of these lagoons up here. You just drive along and pick one that you want to fish. Uh, I've picked it because I'm hoping that given the cloudy conditions there might be a few fish sort of in close tailing about, who knows, I mean it's going to be tough today, I was hoping for sunny conditions, we've got cloud, but anyway. Alright, well those out there are known as Talifa rocks, if you look them up on a the map they're better known as the hen and chickens, in fact I was down here with a bloke one day and he asked me which one was the hen, I think it's fairly self explanatory. We're on the south side of Shooton Island, which is on the southern end of the Freycinet Peninsula. And this is a magnificent part of the world. Now, pretty much it's lucky dip time today. There are a few species here which we could catch, we could catch anything. Not too scientific. A couple of droppers down to a fair old chunk of lead. A couple of bits of frozen squid over the side. I don't think they're going to be too fussy here. What we have got is a bit of structure. There's a big bommy here and you can see this cray pot shot all around it. That comes down here onto a flat bottom and what we want to fish is the intermediate spot where, where the hard bottom meets the soft bottom. On the soft bottom you'll get your flathead, on the hard bottom you'll get, you might pick up your stripies and in that little bit in between you'll get your more and that sort of stuff. So it's quite exciting, you can chuck it over, you catch a bit of rubbish too doing this but there are some very good fish in amongst them. We'll pop it down there to the bottom, see what harpoons. I've sort of found where the fish are, I think. It's, I mean, as I said, I think I've mentioned it before. I don't know if I have, but I'll bring it up again. It's, it's a pretty awful day. But there are these sort of lee shores here, and it, the shore sort of has zigzags in it, and every now and then there's a bit of water with no wind, and it seems that there's a few fish sitting right in there. Now, they're ultra spooky. I've spooked probably four so far, just by sort of being clumsy and silly. But I just saw a swirl up in this bit of water, so I'm going to keep down very low. It's, I mean, chances of catching it are slim because it's just such skinny sort of water and they're so spooky, but we'll give it a go. We'll sneak down. 
No, this looks silly, folks. I know this looks silly. I know it's not, you know, what you'd call uh, sitting in a nice boat on a nice sunny day somewhere. But it's good fun, it's good fun. Now, the biggest mistake you could make here, and I mean, I'm not pretending to be a good fly fisherman. I, I don't really uh, know what I'm doing all that much, but the fish that I've spooked, I've also spooked them by just by casting aimlessly. And so because the fly line's so heavy, it comes down on their head and they, they just get scared and they go away. So the biggest mistake I could make here is just go, all right, there's a fish in there somewhere, throw it in there. I mean, you might get him, but chances are he'll see the fly line land and go away. So what I want to do is wait for him to show and then very quickly get a fly where I think you know his head is facing. So I'm just going to sneak up and keep him low because I mean he'll see you. We'll see. We'll just sit here and wait until we see him. I hope I don't look too much like a clown. All right. So we'll just come here, and if you come here, cameraman Mike. Basically, we're just going to sit here. We know there's a fish in there. We're going to sit here. He's going to show himself again because he's hungry. Well, I hope he's hungry. And as soon as he shows himself, I'm going to try and get a cast on him. kneeling in the water is because I've seen another fish. This isn't too bad. I mean, here he is. He's way down there. I can see him tailing and um, see him down right down in the creek down there. I'm going to quickly go. This isn't too bad at all. Now I've swapped. I had a wet fly on and I've swapped that to a, uh, to a red tag because I don't know why. I just sort of Thought it might be quite good. We'll see how we go. Not a bad idea when you are um, drifting along like this, and the, actually a little bit of breeze has sprung up, so we're drifting reasonably quickly. If you get a bite, you know, a little tap, 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 um, never hurts to pay out a little bit of line, particularly if you're using an overhead. You just knock it out of gear, and you can let a little, little bit of line go, and that keeps the bait where the fish is a little bit longer and this is not a bad fish not a bad fish um, so that's not a bad trick you can use your thumb to hold the spool if you've got a strike and of course when you turn the handle it drops into gear anyway but this feels all right it is a magnificent place i reckon About 90 feet of water here, and uh, sand bottom at the moment. A little bit of colour there, and what do we got? I suspect. I suspect it's a little mowy. A little mowy. Oh, hit the other rod. Now that. Uh, come here, sweetie. They have got a little. Little spikes on them. Take the hook out of there. Sorry. Sorry. Ah! Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Not very delicate. I'm sorry about that. But uh, there you go. That is a morwong. I'm not sure of the actual morwong species, but it, it's commonly known as a jackass fish, the old jackass. And uh, you get, they get up to probably, a kilo and a half is a pretty good one, but um, he'd be just size, and they're good eating. Um, a pretty important commercial fish, and a really good fighting fish, as you saw, for a fish this size, they really do go. And if you get a bigger one, they really go. So, and they tend, tend to be a school fish, so where there's one, there's more. So this is a good sign. Another one. 
you'll get in the bucket. This is uh, the sort of fishing you do with kids. There are plenty of fish, you're always catching something. I should have brought Andrew, the world's biggest man child, boy man. All right, folks, well, this is the moment of truth. This is when all that casting in the oval as a kid will pay off or not pay off. I'm behind him, okay. Oh, this is, this is good fishing, though. This is good fishing. That should, that's in with a shot, that cast. Now, I really would like to have a, uh, a, a sort of a sinking fly on because he's, oh, he's right near it. Look at this. Come on, take it. Oh, come on. Oh, my heart is in my mouth. <laughs> come on, see it. Look at it. Oh, he's going to swim right by. No, here we go. Come on. Look up. No, he didn't do it. It's behind him. So you just think, that, I mean, this is only a short little tiny cast and it's just not that easy for a, not a great fly fisherman like me, but that's him with a shot. He's going to see that. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. He swam straight under it. <laughs> Oh, you're kidding me. All right, folks, welcome back to the show. Now, it would be un-Tasmanian, frankly, to come to Coles Bay and not endeavour to catch a flathead. The, uh, the breeze has just sprung up a touch, so we've come all the way back from the bottom of Shooting Island. We're tucked up here in, uh, I think it's called Promise Bay. It's sort of the big hazard beach one. Just across that little isthmus there is Wineglass Bay. But the beautiful, the she oak shores and the old uh, red granite of Coles Bay. Very picturesque. Now, no great uh, science in catching a flathead at Coles Bay. There are millions of them and uh, probably millions being caught out of here bait on there we'll try that we'll also we'll also try a few other little bits and pieces just to uh, sort of uh, spice it up a little bit that's a little soft plastic lure all the sort of rage these days we'll chuck a few of those about see if we can't snag one on that and also if you're doing this sort of thing and you want to try something different um, try those you know just a deep diving bib lure Particularly in these shallow areas, it's only 10 or 15 feet here, you can throw those out. This comes along, buries through the sand, the flathead will take those with relish and you'll oftentimes get some bigger fish than, um, than the general run that you pick up on bait. But anyway, we haven't got anything yet so I better just shut up and catch a fish first of all. Come on. Uh, come back this way, come on, the way you're swimming. Here we go folks. Oh, I am making an absolute mess today. <laughs> oh. oh, no. That might go some way to proving the, uh, or answering the question of which works better, the bait or the soft plastic. I was just dr jigging the old uh, soft plastic up and down, and the rod holder, that, the rod that had the bait on it sitting in the holder, was the first to go off. And there he is. Slightly agitated. Coles Bay Flathead. And uh, he would be just over the required minimum length, which is 30 centimetres. Now, if you're going to keep Flathead, I highly recommend straight on ice. I also highly re recommend my fish unhook it, but uh, straight into the ice. And when you come to uh, 
clean them, you'll recognise the difference. Look at that, we've got quite a nice little brace of flathead in there. It goes back on. All right, so bait works. Let's see if we can't get one on the soft plastic. Come on, you flathead. Came up behind it. Still there. No, he's not now. I've been known to break the odd driver too, occasionally on the golf course, but that's all right. Now, it's all right. Just take a deep breath. Calm down. Calm down. I'm putting a dry back on because that fish came up behind that fly and uh, like he saw it land, he charged over to it and then just balked at it for some stupid reason. Stupid fish. So I'm putting a dry on, I'm putting a dun on, which uh, hopefully they might come up and take, who knows. This stuff is called gink, it's floatant, so that your fly floats, folks. I wonder how Nick's going. Ooh. Yep. <laughs> oh, I think that one's going as well too. Uh, now, this is what's been, uh, Taking a little bit of time. There's a fish on there. I'll just talk this other one while I'm going. But it took a little time and it took a little patience, but finally the Coles Bay flathead on the jig. And there he is. Poor little darling. Ooh. You just toss these out. Shallow water works best for them, but as you can see, that's the action that the fish like. So you just toss that out. You need to get it on the bottom. We're drifting a bit fast for them today, but generally speaking, in uh, calmer conditions, you can flick them out and you can just wind them back. And if you go past a flathead's nose, they'll eat it every time. Oh, come here. You're another one for the pot. And I think we've got one on here as well. No, he must have got off, I think. But anyway, folks, Coles Bay, Tasmania's adventure fishing playground. Um, if you'd like to come down here and there's plenty to see and do, this is how you go about it. Coles Bay is of course on Tasmania's east coast and you can fish there pretty much year round. Now for striped trumpeter you need to sound out gravelly kind of bottom and drop down a couple of hooks with some fresh bait. You'll catch a huge variety of fish using this technique. But is, well the bay is flathead heaven. Just head somewhere sandy and a feed will surely come your way. Well, I've caught one. Certainly not the ones that uh, we were seeing before, but look, the wind's just died down a little bit and the sun's sort of coming, it's warming up, so I, yeah, I, I put it done on, but I've just been prospecting around those shores and, well, it's a fish, folks, it's a start, all right, it's not one of those that was tailing that I had the chance to catch and, oh, you know, I said, why don't I go up to the Western Lakes and catch some big fish, some big fish, but that's all right, this is a start, this is a tiny little brown. I wonder how long he's been in the lake for. Not very long, I wouldn't think. But that's the thing about these fish up here. They're wonderful wild brown trout and they are so hard to catch. I mean, admittedly, I made a blunder on quite a few occasions so far um, and missed, you know, quite a few fish, quite a few good big fish. But, I mean, that's because I'm your average fly fisherman and this place really tests your average fly fisherman. He's gone. All right, we'll keep going. I think we might be able to get a big one. Yes, that's better than a Mo Wong though. Better than a Mo Wong. Lake Kay is part of the 19 lagoons and you get there by driving to beautiful Liawini in the highlands and turning off to Lake Augusta. There are literally scores of little lakes in the area. Most contain trout. Be sure to check the regulations though, as many of the lakes are artificial fly or fly fish only waters. The trout, well they're there, but they're often tough to catch. Persevere, you might reap the rewards. Alright, yes, well, uh, I've been well and truly beaten here today by these Western Lakes fish. I think 
the weather sort of beat me uh, to an extent. And as a good fisherman, I think all good fishermen should have an excuse. We've found a little calm little corner now. We've walked a long way. We're at the back of Carter Lake somewhere, if any of you know where that is. Just no good, no go today. There's some days that you're better off, you know, stopping by, stopping off at Arthur's Lake or Bronte Lagoon, which is where you, you can go to catch fish. But I mean, that's the thing about out here, the Western Lakes, they're, they're not handed to you on a platter. You've got to sort of hunt them and, and try and catch them. And Well, I've failed today, but that's all right. That's all right. It's only, uh, yeah, what is it? It's just getting on to one o'clock. So we're going to drive back down the mountain where, well, I think the weather's a fair bit better. And we'll fish a little stream, which uh, which is another spot that I learned how to fly fish. So, yeah, it's a bit like a wild goose chase. Yeah, Fresno though, great to be there right now.